Hello and welcome. This presentation is a series of videos about Microsoft InfoPath. I begin by introducing you to InfoPath and why forms matter, the types of forms you can produce, and I conclude the series by covering the steps to designing a form. Why InfoPath? Forms gather information efficiently and reliably. InfoPath solutions help you reach more users. Forms can be distributed through web browsers, Microsoft Office Outlook, email messages, mobile devices, SharePoint hosted form solutions. Forms help you to attain the right information the first time. They provide real-time validation. Pre-populated fields minimizes transcription errors because users select option and data terms remain consistent. Shared data connections means data can be retrieved and posted to multiple data sources. Most importantly, integration with SharePoint means users don't require additional software. InfoPath offers two SharePoint templates, SharePoint form libraries, SharePoint lists, and on-premise workflow integration with SharePoint server. So the question has to be, what's InfoPath value to you? InfoPath can be used by developers and end users. In other words, if you're comfortable using a wizard type experience, you don't need programming skills to create fabulous forms. InfoPath follows an intuitive sequence of steps. InfoPath forms should create an interactive experience for your end users. For example, a mix of text, images, questions, drop down boxes, radio buttons, conditional logic guides end users according to their answers to questions. Questions requiring further explanations can have a question mark image inserted next to the question text. When the user clicks the image, text guidance as to how to answer the question and the possible implications can be read. Forms can be designed so users only see what they need to complete. Other authorized users, for example, for office only use, will see that particular section. To summarize, good form design, when completed, traces users' input and provides a means to edit change responses. Most importantly, form submission should be easy. Submit should ideally be a single click button. Users face many challenges with business forms. For example, rekeying information is inefficient and increases chances of transposition errors. Paper-based forms increase error probabilities. Submitting multiple forms for a single process can lead to misleading and or confusing results. Other factors of consideration can be disconnected business processes such as version management for form templates, business process islands that don't integrate, converting printable Microsoft Office Word templates to function as electronic forms. Further challenges, clumsy form solutions. For example, one size fits all. Such solutions can be inflexible. Buying multiple form products and making more work can be unwieldy. Upgrading software may have a negative impact on users and workflows. Preform pricing imposes attacks on business processes. Steps to building forms. InfoPath provides two packages. One is the designer, the other is the filler. This series of videos will focus on SharePoint browser form development. End users require Microsoft Office 365 SharePoint to view, complete and submit the form. The next two slides are for illustrative purposes only. Please note the person designated to design forms for Microsoft Office 365 SharePoint will require Microsoft InfoPath. InfoPath Designer. Designer, as you probably assume correctly, is the developer's package. The filler is the software package end users use to fill in a form. Why two packages given most expect to use a browser to fill in forms? A very good question. Developing InfoPath forms for InfoPath filler offers the developer more controls. For example, one of the many options is Ink Picture. This capability allows users to use touchscreen pen to sign the form. However, to utilize such capabilities, users must have Microsoft InfoPath installed. InfoPath Filler InfoPath Designer is used to develop and publish a form. The filler software enables users to complete and submit a form. InfoPath Templates When we start InfoPath Designer, the software opens backstage, new templates categories. The most popular are listed first. 
I want to point out to you there is an important difference between SharePoint List and SharePoint Form Library. Appreciating the difference prior to form development can avoid considerable frustration later on. SharePoint List has to be created prior to you creating a form. If you select a template, you have to provide the uniform resource locator URL address prior to form creation. In other words, where your form is to be stored and used. If you choose SharePoint Form Library Template, InfoPath opens without you having to provide a location to store your form. Stages to build an InfoPath template Data Source Our first decision has to be what kind of SharePoint form should we choose to create. If we wish to add to an existing SharePoint list, then we must choose SharePoint List Template. Assuming we don't have a data schema, we should choose SharePoint Library. As we develop our SharePoint Library template, we create a data specification and when we publish the template to a SharePoint Library, we create a data source. Layout. If you have experience of developing web pages or in the past you've built forms in Microsoft Word, you'll find InfoPath tools somewhat familiar. Page layout, templates, themes are an arrangement of tables for the entire form. You can insert other tables within the layout. Within the tables we can organize controls, for example date picker, repeating section, drop down box, attach a file or picture, add a calculation function, controls. Viewing the home tab you can see and select a variety of tools, for example input text control can be used to allow a user to type their first name. A drop down list could force the user to select a departmental name. Allowing a user to type their own departmental name can be somewhat problematical. I point this out because having visited numerous organizations and spoken to many individuals, I'm no longer surprised when employees when asked say they work for payroll or something else. However, talk to senior management or HR, such an employee is categorized as working for finance. Data becomes meaningless if definitions vary. Object controls allow a user to add a picture, hyperlink or click a navigation button. Container controls can be placed between layout and actual controls. For example, an option section control could be applied to some form views but not others. A real life illustration would be an employee requisition stock from stores. Few employees would have the authorization to do so, which means the majority of users really don't need to view the authorization part of the form. Developing a store's requisition example further, a form developed using Excel, Word or Acrobat requires the number of lines in the form to be predetermined. Using a repeating table container, an InfoPath form user simply clicks to add an additional order item line. Views. The next step is to understand how many people will interact with the form, in what ways. It's not just about entering information. If the form is to be printed, then saving ink or toner may be a requirement. Shading can be removed. Perhaps the print view version only requires 20 or 30 fields to be printed. The form may have an office use only section. And this section only needs to be printed for those requiring the information. Some users may not even need to see that section. Viewers can be configured to provide the user with the information and data input they require to complete their tasks. Print views essentially print what's required to be printed and nothing else. Fit Design Checker. Having reviewed our design and views, the next step is to debug our form. The Design Checker tests our form to ensure the features you've used are supported. In our case, does our form function within a user browser? The report will tell you which form controls will and won't work. Assuming you configured your form from scratch rather than imported a Word or Excel form and then converted the form into InfoPath, you should find your newly created form will be more or less free of bugs. Publish from template. The next hurdle is to publish and configure our submission method. InfoPath wants to know exactly what to do with the data the user has input when the user clicks Submit. Assuming all the preceding steps completed successfully, our last step is to inform our test users about your form. If testing went well, you should notify users about your form. The following series of videos will concentrate on developing a form audit checklist for the beverage provision of a fine dining restaurant. If you choose to watch the following series of videos, you will be able to build your own SharePoint form library form. Thank you for viewing InfoPath SharePoint Forms introduction. I hope you will go on to watch the practical demonstration. 
Having viewed this series, you should feel confident to go on to develop your own info path forms.